Hello again everybody, this is Mr. Everything and I'm coming at you with another painting tutorial. In this one we're going to be painting this green dragon here. I'm going to be painting it for my D&D campaign. So, uh, now I'm, it's on a 3 inch base, it's a metal base, I went ahead and put felt on the bottom of it, as well as I pulled this base off of something else that already had flock, uh, but I'm going to cover that later in the tutorial. All right, so uh, you can see it's got great scale work and detail on the model. I'm totally excited about all that. Uh, now we got started by painting it with this gray primer right here. And then uh, it bonds to plastic, you know, and it's a cryolite. It dries in about 20 minutes or so. You know, uh, I use that first primarily. And then I sprayed it with this Rust-Oleum camouflage uh, because I liked the lightness of the green. The green was very light. Uh, it, even though it's camouflage and it says that it's army green or something like that on here, it's not like an OD. It's like a really light green, and I was happy for that. You can see the color on the dragon. All right, now I brought out a reference dragon here. He, This is the color that I'm shooting for, uh, and I basically pulled out all of my paints that I'm going to be using. This is Hunter Green I'm going to use as a wash. And then the black isn't really going to be black, it's going to be charcoal. I just want it to be like a dark gray, not completely 100% black. And that's going to be on like the uh, claws and any kind of uh, bone protrusions. And then I'm going to use this linen. Now later in the video, I actually don't use the linen, so ignore that. I actually wind up using the antique white on the belly. Okay, and then there's this lipstick red that I have. I'm gonna use that on the tongue. Uh, that's simple and easy peasy. And then I was gonna use the antique white on the teeth, but I wind up using actually magnolia white. Uh, so you'll see that when it actually gets painted. And then I have this uh, forest green here, just in case I felt like I needed to do any dry brushing after I paint, or paint on the dark wash, I wind up not needing to do that. So let's go ahead and get started. Now I wanted to show you that this base was three inches by three inches. That's because that model is a huge dragon. Well, this is actually a medium-sized dragon, which is only on one square base. And then this is a large dragon, which is on a two-inch base. So you have a wormling, a young dragon, which is the white dragon here, and then you have the adult dragon, which is on a huge base. Uh, there is one larger than that called the ancient dragon, which is actually on a four-by-four four base. I just don't have any of those. And I wanted to kind of give you a comparison of the size between a young and an adult dragon. And then later in the end of the video, I'll actually give you a size comparison against a human figure from Dungeons and Dragons. All right, so now I just got my standard uh, one inch paintbrush, and that's what I'm gonna use to apply this green wash. Uh, and then I just take the paint, put it in my little palette here, squeeze out a little bit of green on the palette, and then, not a whole lot, just, just as you can see, probably about a half an inch worth. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some water to that, to water it down. Because we're creating our own wash. That's about two to one right there, two, about the same amount of water. And then I decide, you know what, I'm going to go to about four, nah, let's go to six. Uh, I, I was pretty content with six, but then I said, nah, let's go to eight. Why not? Just water it down a little bit more. Uh, okay, and then I use the brush to mix the paint and the water together. Um, I'm just stippling it because I don't want to uh, splash it all over the place and I don't want it to go, you know, all over my table and things like that. So I just apply some gen gentle pushing and pressuring. Uh, and also I didn't want it to like, you know, because the brush actually will fling paint across the room if you, if you uh, are like that. So I grab a paper towel because I know that uh, I'm about to make a mess. <laughs> and so I put it on top of a paper towel because hoping that if anything drips off the dragon, it's going to drip onto the paper towel. And then I just go ahead and start brushing it on, right? 
Uh, 100% coverage is what we're shooting for. And look at that, I'm already starting to make a mess. So we're just basically going for uh, covering every single inch of this model. Leave no scale unturned. You can kind of see the green dragon uh, reference dragon is off on the right hand side on my black uh, paintboard over there. And you will see uh, how close of a resemblance this is. Okay, now it just takes a little bit of a second. You just gotta uh, flip it around, turn it around, make sure you get in every single corner and crevice. Uh, it does take a second. I was holding it by the tail originally, but I can't do that if I flip it around. So I have to hold it by the base. And I'm sorry if some of this is off camera, but I'm just uh, trying to get it all. And I realized I didn't mix up enough paint. So let me go ahead and mix up some additional paint, and I'll be right back. All right, I got some new paint uh, mixed up, and we're continuing on with our brushing. Now we're going to cover every single inch, the underside, the claws, the body. Um, now what this watered down paint will do is it will soak into all the scale cr cracks. It will get into the wings. It will dry up and when it does, it spreads out. Uh, it will, you will see the light green starting to shine through on the raised areas. And this darker green that I'm using, this hunter's green, will actually um, settle, settle into the cracks and crevices. Um, and then it'll be the effect that we're going for. So um, when I get this completely painted, we'll put it down and we'll move on to the next step. All right, now that the green is done and it is dried, we are going to go on to the next step, which is our charcoal. It's the black. Uh, so we're taking a look, making sure, even though everything's not 100% dry, you can kind of see the shine right there. That's okay, because the, the claws are, and the tips of the wings that need the charcoal, those are dry. So let's go ahead and, uh, because I'm using ceram coat, cer like for ceramics really, uh, it's already kind of watered down a little bit, so I do not need to add any water to this. Uh, paint. Um, early on in my career in painting I'd made mistake and assumed that all of these bottle type paints were the same and they are not. Uh, the folk art is a heavy pigment where the ceramic coat or whatever is uh, kind of a watered down paint so you don't have to add any water to it. Uh, but some colors are different than others but this one is liquid. So let's go ahead and apply it and I'm not really doing a whole lot. I'm just doing the claws and the wing tips. So here we go. Let's do this. Get comfortable. There. Oh, off camera. There we go. All right, so we're getting both sides, the inside, the outside, look around. I try to do one at a time. Sometimes that's not practical but I try to do one at a time so that I can focus on making sure I get the front side back side corner and everything um, taking a look at yep see how this side's not done so I get this side and there go easy now when I go doing the claws on the on the feet and the legs uh, some of the claws are on the base and it's okay if you paint the claw uh, and the base because when you go to flock the base you're going to cover any mistakes you made by painting the base. So basically I'm not even really concerning myself with accidentally painting the base. Uh, so I'm just speeding along through this because it's not important. I, knew it's, I know it's not going to be important because once I put the flock on there that's going to disguise any overpainting that I might have done. And again on the back of the back feet there are these little claw that I need to do these little claw hooks on the ankles that I need the uh, what do they call that the um, heel all right now on the head there are these horns sticking off the top of the 
head and those are also exposed. Now you don't have to paint these black. Sometimes uh, you might want to paint the horns white or bone color. Uh, it depends on the dragon and its alignment. Uh, the evil dragons I tend to paint with the black bones and the good dragons I tend to paint with the white or the bone color like a like an antique white or an ivory color um, but it depends on the color of the dragon because like a red dragon you know you want to paint black but a bronze dragon you also want to paint black so it's just kind of a kind of a look and feel kind of thing how do you want the emotions of the dragon to come across on the table so uh, black tends to be a little bit more evil than the white ones all right so next step is going to be painting that green tongue there <laughs> just reviewing the model making sure everything is done and I haven't missed anything and all right well let me put this down and we'll move on to the next step Okay, the next step is, in fact, the red tongue. Okay, so let me just go ahead and put a very small, because that's all I'm painting is just the tongue. Maybe the inside of the mouth. Uh, so all I need is a very small little drop. Okay, now that we got the red and the water stirred up, we're gonna go ahead and apply the paint to the tongue and the inside of the mouth. Be comfortable. Gotta find the right angles. Want to put it so that you can see what I'm doing also. Now I'm using lipstick red because it is a bright, very uh, vibrant red and it will really stand out. It'll contrast the green very well. And it's like not hard just like gotta get the right angle. And don't forget to get underneath the tongue because there is a uh, underside of the tongue that's overhanging his jaw. Now it's okay if again you hit something you shouldn't with the red. So like I'm hitting the teeth with the red by accident um, and that's okay. You can kind of see, I don't know if you can see it, but I've hit his tooth there uh, with the red. But it doesn't matter because I'm going to go in and paint those teeth white, and that's going to cover that red anyway. So either way. And then i got to get the underside. All right. That looks pretty good. That looks really good. All right. Always double check my work to make sure I'm, I've not missed something. All right. Let me put this down and we'll move on to the next step. All right, now I'm mixing up a little bit of that ivory or antique white. Uh, I'm gonna, this is where I had uh, made a slight mistake, uh, but it actually was, uh, it actually wound up being a better solution anyway. I was gonna do the linen for the uh, base, the, the, the stomach scales, uh, the breast scales, but I wound up using the ivory which actually is a closer color to the base model. I'm, I'm actually happy that I went with the ivory. Uh, I guess subconsciously I realized that this was the perfect color for, what the heck? All right, now let's get started with painting the ivory. This is actually, even though the scales are going left and right, I want to paint uh, vertically or I'll, uh, I'm going to paint across the scale. I'm not painting with the scale, I'm painting across the scale. And the, one of the reasons why I'm doing that is because of the way the green and the, or I should say like the surface scales and the belly scales, there's a line. And I'm trying to go along that line. 
uh, to, so that I don't do any overpainting. If I go left and right, there might be some overpainting. So I'm trying not to do that, being very cautious and careful with that. And also, if you go left and right, uh, I mean, let me rephrase that, if you go up and down, uh, you'll get a little bit of this dry brush effect uh, and some of the scales, you'll actually get shadowing and stuff. And that's okay. If you don't, that's okay too. Remember to use a brush that is large enough for you to do what you need to do quickly, but not so large that you can't get any detail out of it. Uh, there's a there's a gentle ba a gentle there's a there's a delicate balance between the size of the brush and the amount of time it takes and the amount of detail you can get. Sure, I could use like a 10-0 brush to paint the entire model, but that would take forever. And I could also use like my one inch paintbrush you see on the top of the screen. I could use that to paint the whole model, but you know what? I wouldn't have any detail. So you gotta use the right brush for the right amount of time you're trying to take, the amount of area you're trying to cover, and the amount of detail you're trying to get. So you gotta think about these things. All right, so right here, I think I'm just using a standard Citadel uh, starter brush. I think it's just a standard Citadel starter brush, believe it or not. Those brushes aren't too bad. I've had to use those brushes for years. I've used them on all kinds of models. All right, so let's continue on painting this entire belly. And uh, all the way down, it's going to be all the way down. It's going to be under the belly as well as the tail as well. Okay, so now we're finishing up the ivory on the belly. I am basically put a little bit of water, uh, additional water into the paint to give it, to make it thinner so that, and then I, now I'm going through and just gradually touching up horizontally uh, along the edge of the uh, scales just hitting in any of the areas that I might have missed just or not missed but uh, where the paint might have clumped up or some of the green is shining through too much so I went through and just basically touched it up very lightly okay so let me just put that down and we'll move on to the next step which I think is going to be I think I'm gonna go ahead and do the teeth because the red should be dry by now And that's when I realized, I said, oh my gosh, I just used the ivory on the body and I didn't use the linen. What the heck? So that's what that's what's going through my head. And I said, okay, no problem. It looks good. It actually looks like it's supposed to look. You know, I'm comparing them to it. I'm saying, okay, screw it. That's probably the way I should have gone in the first place. So let me go ahead and instead of using this linen and then the ivory, let me go ahead and get some white and I'll be right back. All right, now that I've got some white, let's go ahead and put that in the palette. All I need is just a little drop because what am I doing? I'm only doing some teeth. That's it. I probably put way too much. The bottle, these, these big bottles, they have a tendency to drop like big, huge chunks of paint, but that's okay. So let's go ahead and it's super cheap, you know, buck 50 for a bottle. So let's go ahead and hit up these teeth get into a place where you can see it and go so now um, I'm just trying to avoid hitting the gums and um, I'm not really even concerning myself with the inside of the teeth uh, all I care about is the outside because what it's going to do is it's, you can already see how it's kind of standing out against the green and the red uh, but you know, Mr. Everything is, he's a little bit of stickler to all the different details. I mean, I'm the kind of guy that will paint the underside of a tank that you'll never see. So, or the inside of a, you know, something. So, what I'll do is I will actually wind up painting the inside of the teeth because I'm insane like that. <laughs> Alright, let's go ahead and paint up these teeth real quick and move on to the next step here. Yeah, double checking all the teeth, trying to really seriously avoid painting the tongue or the uh, gums uh, and any 
I've already covered up the error I made earlier where I had painted one of the teeth red. I've already covered it with white. It's completely fixed. So now let's go ahead and uh, touch these all up. All right, now I'm showing you right here where I made a mistake. I had hit some white on the tongue. So all I gotta do is just hit a little bit of this red that I have left over from painting it earlier and just fixing it. Done, fixed, tongue fixed. All right, so now I'm gonna take the smallest brush I've got. I've got this really 10-0 brush and I'm gonna paint a very small dot of white on the eyeball. Uh, I'm not going to cover the eyeball 100%. It's just going to be a dot in the middle of the eyeball. And what that'll do is it'll bring out this eye. Uh, you'll be you'll be impressed. And I try to make the eye kind of a slot or a slit, like front to back. You see that? How I got that line for the eye? Yes. That looks good. All right, let's compare the difference. Like, look at the eye on that one. Doesn't look good, it looks horrible. Flip it around. That looks great. <laughs> In my opinion, I'm sorry if I'm making my own opinions, but uh, you, you can agree or disagree. All right, so let's do the second eye. Very careful because you don't want to overpaint. If I did, I'd have to go back over with some green and correct it. Now, this is not how you paint a human eye, or this is not how you paint an eye on a 28 millimeter World War II figure or anything like that. This is just, in this case, this dragon. Now, some people will put like vertical black lines in their eyes, or they'll overpaint the eye, well, they'll make the eye really big and bulbous, like anime eyes or something uh, don't do that don't less is more when you're painting eyes all right so let me uh, clean up my brush real quick and I'll be right back all right this next technique I'm going to show you is done with a sharpie pen the one I have here is a medium tip pen fine tip pens are probably better uh, it's a felt tip pen it's not a it's not a ballpoint pen it's a felt tip pen it's medium uh, medium seems to work pretty good on the larger models so what we're doing is we're black lining. Uh, black lining, a lot of people will use a brush and ink and paint, uh, and then they will try to get it down exactly in the right spots. But I'll tell you now, the pen system is so much easier. You're getting a transition between colors. So like from the green to the ivory, you need to use, or you should use a black line. Uh, and what it does is it draws your eyes to the separation of the colors and it actually makes the colors seem more uh, What's the word I'm looking for like more defined like they're more uh, Kind of like a comic book. You know how the the cells in the comic book each have their own black Area that the paint is put into or the color ink color is put into but that those black lines really make those colors stand out a lot of times I will use black lining to accentuate something on the same color so like if I wanted to make uh, the green separate with a black line I'll do that but in this case I just want to do uh, an area between the ivory and the green and that's my main focus here and you can see I drew a line here and this is what it looks like I've already drawn this one on the other side and you can kind of see how the black really makes that green and the ivory separate there you go so now what I want to do is go over the entire uh, belly ivory the separation between the green and the uh, you know the tail the body the neck all that and then I'll be right back all right now I'm touching up the wings as well the area where the ribs of the wings I put in little black lines in there to kind of accentuate the ribs as well 
Let's take a look at it, because uh, I think I've got everything black line that I need. Let me double check this real quick, okay. And take a look at it, what do you think? The black there, the black along the ribs, the, uh, the body along the green and the ivory. I think that looks really good. Okay, let me set this off to the side and we'll get going on the next step. All right, so the next step is to apply flock to the base. I've given up on the idea of putting any kind of grit on the base, don't need it. Uh, because the base is green uh, and the flock is green as you see here. And it's mixed with all kinds of like sawdust and clump foliage and a little bit of stone. It's really a big huge mixture of junk. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some uh, PVA glue in my palette. And I'm going to add some water to the PVA and then we'll go ahead and mix that up. So I, I like to do like a 50-50 mix a one-to-one -one ratio of water to PVA uh, for my flock. Um, when you're doing, uh, when you're painting the base, I didn't realize this, but the, uh, the I, I knew it, but I didn't, re didn't think about it. The uh, previous flock that is on the base uh, will absorb more of the PVA water mixture than the, like a normal, just regular base. So I didn't actually mix enough. So I'll actually wind up mixing two bowls of this PVA just for this one base. Uh, I thought I had enough. Now, when you're mixing it, you don't want it to be, you want it to wind up being uh, completely milky. You don't want it to look like curdled milk. You want it to look like milk. Uh, if there's still chunks of PVA floating around in the water, then it's not stirred up enough. So I wind up stirring this up quite a bit until it turns completely white, and it looks pretty good. So let me apply this, and um, now I, I pay particular attention to the feet. I make sure that I get it in between the toes of uh, the any model really and this one uh, is no exception so I got to get inside there because I want there to be grass inside there and I don't want it to when I sprinkle the flock on it I don't want it to uh, not have grass between the toes because then it will look like there's a base underneath it and you don't want that so let me go ahead and completely cover this base with this PVA water mixture and then I'll be right back All right, now we're almost completely covered. I've already made my second batch of glue and I've started to put it on there. And as you can see, over the flock, I've put it pretty heavy. I'm doing this on purpose. I want it to be an extremely heavy coat uh, on top of the flock because I want there to be no mistaking of the new flock on the base. And then I also put it kind of heavy on the base itself just because if I'm going to mix up the glue I might as well use it. I don't have another model I'm going to be using it on so let's go ahead and just pile it all on here. I don't even care. It actually helps. The more, more the glue the better. I think I've got pretty much everything covered. I'm just going over double checking yeah, it really looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and get some flock on this thing. Wait, what? The front toes? Ah, oh, see, look at that. I missed the front toes. Okay, not anymore. Now they're, now they're taken care of. Alrighty. And this one. Put this, hold this. Okay, so hold it over the box so we don't make a mess. And then I just shake this uh, can of Folgers coffee. No, it has all my flock in it. And you see all the chunks of everything else falling out? Uh, that's, that's great. You want it to be kind of a, a, a mixture of stuff. That's in my opinion. I, I like to have like a... I like my bases to tell a story, you know? And by putting those clump foliage chunks in there, the stones and everything, you're getting a pretty cool looking base in my opinion. Some people will just use one type of flock or one color of flock or, you know, and that's not me. I got to use, I got to, I got to have it all. No, uh, but I wanted it to be green 
because this is a green dragon and green dragons are normally in swampy areas, believe it or not. So I guess I could have made it kind of a swampy base with some black, brackish stuff and I could have had some, uh, maybe some oily pools of water on the base or something like that. That would be really cool, but I didn't want to do that. I just wanted to go straight flock like he's in a forest. Because this green dragon represents my uh, green dragon in my campaign, who is actually living in a forest. Now I'm leaving it on top, I'm going to leave it for a good couple of minutes, because I want the flock to soak down into the PVA. After it soaks into the PVA and kind of, um, what's the question, like uh, allow the glue, the tension of the glue, it breaks the tension and it goes down into the glue. So when the glue dries, it'll actually hold on to the flock a lot better. So I've let it sit here for maybe a good five minutes, uh, allow the tension, the surface tension of the glue to break. And then uh, we're going to go ahead and shake it all off here in just a moment. All right, so now I'm grabbing the model, and I'm going to just gradually, uh, very gently, kind of shake off the flock, allow it to fall into my little box here, uh, and then do it from all different angles, pulling this little string off. There we go. Uh, there we go. Come on now, what's going on? Shake this a little bit more, and there I'm shaking it. Now I need to take a paintbrush and uh, I'm gonna gently tap the bottom. Where's my paintbrush? Oh, there it is. Now I'm gonna tap the bottom, allowing more flock to fall. You can kind of see the flock falling back into the box. And you can see some clump foliage stuck to the bottom of the felt. Knock that piece off, there we get, whoop, wait, come on. Tapping, allowing the flock to fall into the box. Just gent gentle tapping. Tap, 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 you know. I'm not bashing it really hard or anything. I'm just tapping it. All right, put that down. Put all this extra flock. You can see how the flock's got a whole bunch of junk in it. <laughs> I like that. I like that look. Okay, clean off my box put it all back because I like reusing flock of course you know there's no wastage here now I'm gonna see if I can't brush off the bottom of the base maybe with this soft brush Uh, the felt, I probably should have, now I, this is a reused base. The base, I, it used to be a base for a building, for my micro armor, uh, so I reused that base. Uh, if I had not reused the base, I wouldn't have been having all that problem with the felt on the bottom of the base, or the flock on the top of the base. So, uh, but that was me. I wanted to reuse it because I wasn't using it on that building anymore, and it was perfectly 3x3, three three, so I went ahead and used it. All right, so let me adjust the camera angle on this model so that you can kind of see a better picture of it. And I'm going to get, a, get another model to uh, scale it up against it as well. Yeah, that's a close-up right there. Uh, what do you think of that side? That's one side. Eyes, teeth, claws, body, black lining. Let's flip it around. You know, you got the flock, the eye, the teeth, the black lining as well. Um, let me put this down. Let me get a model, and we'll compare some sizes and, and just the look of it and everything. All right, guys, here we go. We got a good angled shot right here. We've got a D&D &D paladin at his foot. Uh, you can cut, whoa. 
Now, I just wanted to come out and say thank you for coming out and checking out this painting of the green dragon and uh there'll be more of these to come and i appreciate you guys if you like the video please like it if you want to subscribe to the uh channel please do if you want to help support the channel hit the paypal me link in the description below and if you have any requests or any questions about this please drop it in the comments i do read my comments and i appreciate all of you you guys have a great day